So, welcome back. We started by looking at logic and then we saw that logic could be used for computation, that you could do programming in logic and we looked at that concept and we looked at prolog a little bit. Prolog was doing logic with backward chaining, which many people have said is the way that humans also reason in the sense they think of a goal and then they see how to achieve that goal essentially. So, then they would start reasoning backwards from there and many people including Kowalski have said that backward reasoning is the way humans think. But there are also many situations where you do reasoning in a forward fashion that you look at something and then you make some inferences and then go ahead. So, now we will look at this field of rule based expert systems which came out of forward chaining essentially that you could look at patterns in your domain and make decisions essentially. And it has also many applications as mm, it is in fact it is very popular in many uh, corporate uh, environments where they have you know business logic which has to be entered into a program which will make decisions for them. And they also like this idea of declarative programming. So, both prolog and rule based systems that we are looking at today, they promote this idea of declarative programming. The prolog is not pure in the sense that the user does have to order the clauses carefully. The idea in rule based system is 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 more general in that sense that you just give us the rules and we will write an inference engine which will run those rules essentially. Of course, we will give you some meta level control. So, we will look at something called search uh, strategies uh, and uh, once you have chosen that then we will do the rest of the job essentially. But the rules do not have to be written in a particular order or in a particular fashion essentially. So, let us start with that. We have looked at backward chaining, we have looked at forward chaining, we have also looked at resolution method which was a complete method, uh, but for our current interest uh, forward and backward chaining is what we are going to be working with. So, rules they connect antecedents to the consequence. So, that is the idea of a rule if the left hand side is true then the right hand side is true essentially. We imagine the world described by statements in some language in our case it is going to be first order logic. Uh, and then we will write rules which will look at subsets of this knowledge base or look for patterns in the knowledge base. That is the idea of writing rules essentially. The antecedent of a rule captures a pattern in the domain that if you are looking for a certain kind of pattern then the rule will capture that. If the pattern is matched then the consequent will hold true. And if you are doing logical reasoning, then you will assert that the consequent is true. But we will see that the idea of rule based systems is, is more general than just making inferences. You can also trigger actions essentially and this language that we are going to look at allows us to do that essentially. So, backward chaining looks at the goal and it translates into the sub goal. It repeats that process till the sub goals match something in the knowledge base. Does the pattern that the rule capture exist in the domain is the question that we are asking essentially. So, if you have a goal and the goal has an antecedent which is a pattern and is that matched in the knowledge base. So, it is a top down process from goal we are going to sub goals towards the individual facts if you want to say that, it is goal directed essentially. It has a low branching factor because only the rules which uh, have the goal as a consequent will apply essentially. It is also lazy processing and uh, you make the inferences only at query time. When somebody asks that is this particular goal true, only then you go ahead and make this inferences which of course means that it could take time also. On the other hand, forward chaining 
focuses on the pattern in the data and considers the consequences of, of that pattern essentially. It's bottom up, it's data driven. It looks at data and say, oh, I see this pattern and this is the action that I can take or this is the inference that I can draw. By definition, it is eager processing as opposed to lazy processing is that if you can make an inference, you go ahead and make it. You don't consider whether you wanted to make that inference or not or whether it's leading to you to the goal that you have in mind or not. You just go ahead and make that inference. And that is why uh, these kind of methods, they need some additional guidance as to, you know, which of the possible inferences that we want can make, which one should you really make essentially. Because we are assuming that we can make only one inference at a time. It has obviously high branching because uh, many inferences may be possible. Not all of them will be relevant to the goal that you are interested in. So, this field of, of, of forward chaining, data driven processing is also called pattern directed inference system. That you look at patterns and based on that you make inferences and you proceed in this fashion. The question that we are going to ask today and address it is how to make forward chaining work efficiently. So, that is the idea of a pattern directed in, in, in inference system. So, if we have some given state which we can also call as a knowledge base, then a rule looks at a small subset of the knowledge base and does something essentially. Makes an inference is the simplest thing that you can do, but you can do other things also essentially. You can trigger some actions for example, if you are controlling a robot and things like that. So, a rule looks like at a part of a state which matches a pattern and does an appropriate action essentially, which is given in the described in the rule essentially. So, what triggered this idea of rule based expert systems is that ok fine you are building this system, but where do the rules come from essentially. So, obviously, every time you develop some software you have to somehow inject domain knowledge in that essentially. Even simple things like sorting and array, you have to study sorting methods and decide okay, this method will work in this situation, this method will work in this situation and so on. So, some somehow the knowledge has to be either embedded into the system as it is done in procedural languages or it has to be expressed as in some form as it is done in declarative languages like prologue and the language that we are going to look at today ops 5. But the thing is that these rules have to come from somewhere essentially who knows about this domain that we are trying to solve the problem in. So, let us call that domain a domain expert who has this domain knowledge and the idea behind rule based systems is to extract that knowledge from the domain expert and put it into the system. So, can we elicit those rules from experts? So, the expert may be an expert in whatever domain that they are working on and that is where the idea of rule based expert systems came up. This was very popular around 1980, a little before 1980 and a little after 1980 also and many systems were developed. They were developed for, for example, prospecting oil. So, if you are a company which digs oil from the earth, then you have to you know dig, you have to you know search for where could oil be, do some study, make a well, dig it and see if you strike oil or not. So, this whole process is so expensive uh, that uh, people feel that if a rule based system, people felt that uh, if, you, if a rule based system could uh, give us a good idea of where to dig, then it would you know, pay for its own development simply by the amount of money that it would save the company. So, there was a system called prospector, maybe you should go and look at that essentially. Another feature where people tried to develop expert systems was in diagnosis, human diagnosis as well as machine diagnosis. Because diagnosis is really pattern driven, you see a certain pattern and you make certain inferences. Diagnosis is complicated by the fact that it is not uh, 
deduction it is as we have discussed earlier it is abduction but nevertheless it is a very useful thing to have and uh, therefore people have spent a lot of time doing diagnosis so one of the earliest diagnosis systems was a program called mycin if you just look for this on the internet you will get some information about it uh, because of the fact that it was doing abduction it introduced a measure of belief or a measure of uh, uh, accessibility of its uh, uh, conclusions in the form of numbers which were called as certainty factors that how certain are you that if you see these 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 symptoms then this is the disease then the rule came with this certainty factors and therefore you know you could at least try and evaluate of all the possible hypotheses that you are making which one is the most likely one and configuration we had already mentioned that you know they were used for configuring systems uh, uh, in this language and maybe we will look at that uh, example very quickly again essentially what happened in after this rule based expert system idea came forward is that people discovered that it, that that conceptually it's a great idea that you go to a human expert elicit their knowledge put it in a system and lo you have a expert system but it turned out as it turned out the experts were either un unwilling or they were unable to art articulate the knowledge in the form of rules so in those days the community had developed a lot of protocols which said that this is how you should extract knowledge so knowledge acquisition be became a big thing and people put in a lot of effort so they would record interviews instead of asking the experts to articulate rules directly and then from that they would try to extract rules and that kind of stuff essentially but it was not easy and uh, it became a bottleneck so that was known as a knowledge uh, acquisition bottleneck what happened in the mid 80s is that people said that okay instead of abstracting these rules from experts why don't we just store their entire experiences and that gave rise to a whole new field called case based reasoning where every instance of problem solving was stored as a case and a case had two parts one was the problem description part and one was the solution part so if you could just store the entire thing as a case and then you had a whole repository of cases as experience grew then when you see a new problem to solve you match the problem with the problem part of your cases so retrieve the case which matches best the problem description take its solution description maybe adapt it a little bit to the current problem and you have a problem solver there it's also knowledge based it's just that the knowledge is not articulated explicitly in the form of rules the knowledge is stored as direct experiences from which you would eventually would have derived the rules and case space reasoning says let's use those experiences directly and it was also a very successful uh, way of solving problems and a lot of industrial systems were developed which were based on case space reasoning and of course in the mid 80s rumelhart and company again gave us the backprop algorithm for neural networks so it kind of the interest in neural networks came back and since then we have not looked back uh, 84 85 we got the backprop then sometime early in this century we got this algorithm for deep learning and uh, since then neural networks have been a focus of many people who work in ai but the businesses had spotted an opportunity and they stuck to the idea of rule based systems even though they would not call them expert systems they were definitely a useful way of implementing software and typically in businesses where you have something called business logic the idea that the managers in the business could articulate that logic and put it into their system and some system would actually run it was very appealing to them essentially because they didn't have to go to a software firm every time they tweak something because if you're doing programming in a procedural language then a lot of the stuff that you lot of the knowledge that you are putting in is embedded in the code essentially 
the idea of declarative programming is that control is different from logic. So, if you can express the logic separately and leave the control to the machine, then we have a different paradigm of programming and that was eminently suitable for people who worked in business because for them expressing the logic itself and maybe tweaking it as they experimented with their system came quite naturally. But they were not called expert systems any longer, they were just called rule based rule based systems. Now, one thing about logic is that you may have a large knowledge base, you may have a large description of the world, but making inferences is something which is local, it is a local action that you do not look at the whole knowledge base to arrive at a conclusion, you only look at a part essentially. So, the conclusions depend only on the antecedents being matched essentially. So, if you have a rule and if you can find the antecedents of that in the knowledge base, then you can go ahead and make the conclusion. So, in that sense it is local in nature that uh, you look at local patterns and you make local inferences. From the complexity purposes that makes life better. So, one does not have to consider the entire knowledge base essentially. So, for example, if you have looked at algorithms for state space search, they treat the whole knowledge base as a state and say from this state I can go to this state and from this state I can go to this state and so on and so forth. Or if you look at something called default reasoning, which says that uh, uh, for example, you might want to say something like if x is a professor, then x has a PhD, okay, unless something, something, something. There may be eminent people who are professors and who do not have a PhD, uh, but you want to make that inference that professors in general have PhD. Now, as we will see, we will look at default reasoning as we go along. Uh, to make default inferences, you have to look at the entire knowledge base. So, complexity wise that goes up essentially. In a similar fashion, probabilistic reasoning will also depend on the knowledge base because the probabilities will come from the data and the knowledge base. So, rule based systems exploit the locality of action essentially, hmm, which is true of logic in general. Essentially. Forward chaining actively considers patterns in the domain and it says that if I can see this pattern, I can do this action. The action could be making an assertion as in logic that this the, that if if this pattern is true, then this conse consequent is true essentially, but it can do other things also as I said that you can have any kind of action. So, if you see this pattern do this and this do this could include making an assertion. Okay. So, in that sense it subsumes making inferences. So, if you are in a given state, then you can maybe spot many different patterns in that state and therefore, many rules are applicable and you may want to choose one of them. So, a state is a set of sentences in some language. So, it is a knowledge base. In our case, the language is going to be first order logic and the pattern is a subset of those sentences in, in that knowledge base and a move or an inference or whatever you want to call it says that if you see a pattern, then you do some action essentially. So, it could be that you could uh, in this example see four different patterns and uh, therefore, do four different actions. The key point of course, will be which of those four choices will you make and that is where the effectiveness of the system will lie. We have already been speaking about declarative programming. So, let us do a quick kind of a recap of this. A rule associates an action with a pattern in the state essentially. In the language that we are looking at, a rule is also called a production. A production or a rule, it unifies different kinds of knowledge into one form. It can be heuristic knowledge that if this is the pattern, then this is the right kind of action. It can be business rules like if this is the let us say uh, description of a loan seeker, then this 
person is eligible for a loan. It could even be actions in a programming language, essentially, as we will see. So, it is, it turns out that these rules are enough to define a complete programming language, which is Turing complete, essentially. So, just like Prolog is Turing complete, this language that we are going to be looking at is also Turing complete. And by Turing complete, we mean that anything that the Turing machine can do, this program language will allow you to do. The idea of declarative programming, which we have been repeatedly saying, is that the user or the programmer only states the rules. As I said, it is very popular in business environment, for example, lending by banks. The programmer only specifies the pattern action association. She does not specify when that action should be done, which is the key part when you are doing imperative programming or procedural languages, essentially. But nevertheless, we will have to talk about search strategies, because as we saw in the previous slide, if there are four possible rules that you can apply, which one should you choose essentially. So, what rule based systems developers do is that they give you a choice of strategies that you can use and then you can say that, okay, this is a strategy I will use and we will look at a few examples of that essentially. Now, let us move on to defining rule based production systems, but since this definition will require a little bit of time, uh, let us take a break and come back and start on this uh, in the next video.